Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. If you're new to the Tall Man Clan, my name is Robert, aka The Tall Man, and today we'll be talking about something super, super important for all you cruise lovers out there. Imagine you've been planning this amazing cruise vacation for months, and you show up at the port only to be told you can't board. Nightmare, right? Today I'm going to share with you eight reasons why you might get denied boarding on a cruise ship and how to avoid these situations. So let's dive right in. Number one, attempting to bring drugs or weapons on board. Now this should be a no-brainer, but it happens more often than you think. Cruise lines have strict security measures in place and all luggage is screened before boarding. If you're caught with illegal substances to include CBD, even though it's legal in your home state, or any kind of weapon, you'll be denied boarding and could even face legal consequences. Stick to the cruise line's rules and pack wisely. Number two, being disruptive or drunk. If you show up at the port and you're causing a scene or are visibly intoxicated, the cruise line has every right to deny you boarding. They're responsible for the safety and comfort of all passengers and they don't want to take any chances. Keep it together, my friends, and save the boarding for after you've boarded the ship. Number three, getting to the port too late. This is probably the most straightforward reason. Cruise ships run on very tight schedules. If you arrive late, the ship won't wait for you. Trust me, they will leave on time and you'll be left waving from the dock. To avoid this, make sure you plan your trip to the port well in advance. Arrive at least a few hours before departure time and if you're flying in on the same day, book an early flight. Better yet, consider arriving the day before. That way you'll have some buffer time in case of any flight delays. Number four, not having the correct documentation. Now this is a big one and it has several parts so let's break it down. Number one, passports. Most cruise lines require a valid passport. Check the expiration date and make sure it's valid for at least six months beyond your return date. Some cruises might accept a birth certificate and government issue ID for closed loop cruises. Now for all you newbies out there, a closed loop cruise is one that starts and ends in the same US port. We always recommend having a passport just in case something happens that prevents you from getting back on the ship, causing you to have to fly home. If that were to happen to you, your birth certificate and driver's license is no longer enough to get you back home, and we don't want to even think about the process of getting a passport when you are stuck outside the U.S. Visas. Now, depending on your itinerary, you might need a visa for certain countries. Do your homework and find out the visa requirements for all the ports of call on your cruise. Some countries require you to have a visa before you travel, while others offer visas upon arrival. Make sure you have everything sorted out well in advance. Recent name changes. If you've had a recent name change, make sure all your documentation matches. This includes your passport, cruise bookings, and any other travel documents. If there's a mismatch, you could be denied boarding. Carry proof of your name changes such as a marriage certificate or your court order just in case. Traveling with children not yours. If you're traveling with children that are not your own, you'll need additional documents. This includes a notarized letter of consent from the child's parents or legal guardians, a copy of their passports, and perhaps even a medical release form. Cruise lines are very strict about this to prevent child abduction and trafficking. Well, we're halfway through. If you're finding this information helpful, informative, or entertaining in any way, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Now back to being denied. Number five, pregnancy. Cruise lines have specific policies regarding the pregnant passenger. Most won't allow you to sail if you're more than 24 to 28 weeks pregnant at any point during the cruise. This is because they don't have the medical facilities to handle complications that could arise. If you're pregnant, you'll need to provide a letter from your doctor confirming your due date and that you're fit to travel. Check with your cruise line for specific policies and plan accordingly. In fact, just recently a woman slipped through the cracks and gave birth while on board. The ship had to reroute to get this woman and her newborn the medical attention they needed, which disrupted the cruise for every other passenger. Number six, traveling with a child under six months old. Most cruise lines won't allow infants under six months old to board. For certain itineraries such as trans-ocean crossings or remote destinations, the minimum age might be higher at like one years old. This is due to the limited medical care available on board and the potential risks to very young children. Always check the age requirement before you book your cruise if you're planning to travel with a baby. Number seven, lack of travel insurance. While travel insurance is not always mandatory, it's highly recommended. Travel insurance can cover unexpected cancellations, medical emergencies, and even trip interruptions. 
Some cruise lines may require you to have specific coverage, especially if you're traveling to remote destinations. Double check the requirements of your cruise line and get a comprehensive travel insurance policy. It's way better to be safe than sorry. Number eight, signs of sickness. In today's world, health and safety are top priorities for cruise lines. If you're showing symptoms of a contagious illness such as a fever, coughing, or any other signs of being unwell, you might be denied boarding. This is to prevent outbreaks on the shell. Make sure you're in good health before you travel, and if you do get sick, contact the cruise lines to discuss your options. They might allow you to reschedule your trip. So there you have it, folks. Eight reasons why you might get denied boarding on a cruise ship and how to avoid them. The key is to be prepared, stay informed, and follow the rules. Cruising is an amazing way to travel, and with little planning, you can make sure your vacation goes off without a hitch. Now, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell so you never miss any of our ship reviews, travel tips, and adventures. Thank you for watching. Happy cruising. And until we see you again in the next video or on the next ship, be safe.